What's good guys? So in this video, we're going to be going over a health bar. So imagine this is our health bar. I have it starting out as like a big scale real quick. Let me just go in here and change this. Um, I'll just change it to one so you guys can see. Yeah, and then maybe we'll move it down a little bit. Um, yeah, screw it. All right, so yeah, we're gonna be basically creating this health bar. So I think it's really important for beginners to know that they can get properties, get values in the game and keep track of it and use them to do certain things, um, use those values and properties to do stuff. Because once you understand that, there's so many different things you can do. So I think it's really good for beginners to kind of learn that because it's, it's not a very complicated concept to grasp. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get our player variable. Um, you can only get this local player on a local script, by the way. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to get our screen GUI, which is our script.parent, because this local script, I have stored it under our screen GUI. Um, and yeah, these are terrible names. I didn't name these at all. You may want to name this like health GUI or health if the frame health bar you know what I mean? So definitely come up with some better names. Um, I apologize. I'm just lazy. So we're going to get the character. And so what we're doing right here is we're getting the character. And if the character doesn't exist yet, we are going to um, wait for it. Uh, using the character added event and then connecting it to a wait function. So what we're going to do now is create a function on health changed. And what we need to get is our health. So we're going to say character. Actually, we do need something else. Local humanoid equals character wait for child because Sometimes the humanoid may not exist yet, and so we want to wait for the humanoid to make sure it exists, or else our script will error. Um, and so what we need to do is local health equals humanoid uh, dot health. And what we're going to do is because we're actually going to get some nasty decimal points that we don't want, so we're going to put this in a math dot floor. Um, that way it is just doesn't give us any decimal points whatsoever and then what we're gonna we're gonna do is we're gonna say screen gy actually we'll make this a local health bar equals screen gy dot frame so then we'll say health bar so at least we have a variable that's good for the tutorial so we'll say health bar uh dot size equals udim2 i'm going to use from scale and then we're going to pass in health and divide it by 100 so this means that if health is at 90 it's going to turn into 0 0.9 which is what we need for our values when we use udim2 and we're changing the size of uh, scale and so that's going to that's going to come out to 0.9 if the health was 90 and then we're just going to pass in our, our default um property right here and then what we're going to do is we're going to say humanoid get property change signal health we're going to connect it to our on health changed function okay and so this should keep track of our health if our health changes we'll know and that's when we'll get the new health we could also just call this new health or current health i'll do new health um just so we know exactly what health property we're getting okay uh and to test this out i've created a, another script inside of our spawn location so jesus h 
Where'd it go? Holy crud. How did I get all the way over here? All right, well, anyways. So this is our spawn location. I've put a server script inside of our spawn location. Um, so script.parent, which is our spawn location because the script is a child of spawn location. And then we're using the dot touched event, connecting it to a function. And then we have other part. Um, and then we're saying local character is other part dot parent. If not character, then return. So this is basically saying if parent doesn't exist to other part, then we're returning it. Then we're saying if humanoid isn't inside of the parent that we've got, then we're returning the function. So these keep the function from erroring and breaking. Um, and then we have our debounce, okay, has took. Could actually name this has took health because let's be honest, has took is not clear. Uh, so yeah, then we have has took debounce, has took health debounce. And if it equals true, we're gonna return because we want to wait. I'm actually gonna put a constant up here, local took health wait time equals two All right took health wait time and so yeah there's our constant and so we're basically going to take away five health or we, we can also make another constant actually um local health damage i guess Health damage equals five. We'll do 10 for this video. Health damage. All right. So if has took health, our debounce is true, it's going to return because we don't, we want it to take health a certain amount of time, however much time you want, which in this case is two. All right. So then we are damaging the health if it's false we're setting it to true and then we're waiting uh our took health wait time actually i named it health okay whatever uh and then we're setting it back to false so that we can take health again so let's go and test this so you guys can see this bar working and as you can see this is our health okay and the default for roblox health is that oh well it gets taken like this well it gets it gets increased like this every like second or whatever um but yeah let's go ahead and just keep diminishing our health and as you can see it's <clears throat> it's with the same bar up here uh in the corner and so yeah so yeah, that is one way that we can keep track of our health and um, for our GUI uh, and have our own health bar. Um, so I hope that was pretty helpful for this video. Now, I didn't want to go over animating for this video because um, it's completely different. Uh, but I will eventually make a tween service video for this uh, in the future. But I just wanted to um, come out with this real quick just because it was an easy video to make. And um, I'm still doing, uh, I'm still going over HTTP requests. Uh, and I want to make it a really good video. So I'm going to spend some more time on that. Um, and that should be the next video to come out. But yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.